can really be betting this flop. Understanding that the likelihood of tricky play syndrome at this stage of the game should be minimized as well. So it really doesn't matter what Mario has in his hand, he should be betting. And as I say that, he's checking. The ace of diamond checks around as well. I would think that would have been a good card for Mario's range if the 2-2-4 two, two, wasn't, but it's a jack of clubs on the river. Is Mac going to try to steal this one away? The only way he can win the pot most likely is by betting. But it looks like Mario is going to try to squeak in some value from whatever he is holding or maybe push his opponent off a of four if he has a hand like king-queen. So just took a small bet of 100 by Mario. That's all it took. Matt, we see what he has. We do not know what Mario has, but we can assume it was a bit better than the 9-6, or as some of the chat likes to say, the 69 suited. There is a pale command that looks like KC just tossed it in. It's 93K for first, 64 for second, 41 for third, 31, nine for fourth, 24, five, 10 for fifth, and 19, four for sixth. So all six players already locking up nearly 20K. Big slick for Mario this time, been raising from the hijack. Seven plus. Matt having no reason to be playing his queen jack. But Fabio is perhaps thinking about defending or doing something different, is the chip leader. A very experienced player with lots of decent results, including a WSOP Europe bracelet win. Is defending with queen eight. So both players with live cards. Mario is still ahead on the 10, 6, 7, two clubs flop. Fabio with a gut shot now, so the nine is good for him. Backdoor flush draw as well to the clubs. But meanwhile, Mario is still ahead with his big slick. Both players check. And the seven of spades pairing the board on the turn. Let's see if Fabio now, after it went check, check, tries to wrestle this one away from Mario. And that looks like exactly what he's doing. Betting exactly half the pot gets Mario to snap fold. So very good awareness by Fabio, up to 2.5 million. So there's nearly 6.2 million chips in play and nearly half of those are in Fabio's pile at the moment. So odds on favorite that he will win the event. However, this is poker and anything can happen. It just takes one player to double up through Fabio and everything looks completely different. Holding all the way around to Matt on the button, who also folds as well. 
I don't think Fabio is folding any two. We did see him raise from the small blind earlier with six deuce offsuit. He can continue to put pressure on any player at the table, at least at the moment. And does indeed raise. It looks like a little more than a min raise, maybe 85,000. And a quick fall by Giuliano with a seven deuce. Now seven deuce last night would have been played because during the cash game stream, they had a seven deuce game and an eight three game among other games running simultaneously. And there were a couple spots where eight three and seven deuce showed up in different players' hands, both going for the little bit of prop action. But obviously in a tournament, a seven deuce is a snap fold. Does not play very well. <laughs> it's good to see the players sharing some laughs like they were yesterday. Helps lighten the tension as each of these six players wants to walk away with that massive trophy and the 93,000 euro top prize. In the meantime, let's take a look at the chip counts once again. Now, Fabio, we can see double the stack of Mario. Not too much of a gap between Mario and Matt and Dominico. And then we have the two short stacks in Eric and Giuliano. A bit in jeopardy at this point, both under 10 big blinds. Fabio continuing his aggression. He can just continue to pile up chips. And Giuliano can get nothing going. This time with 9-4, seven deuce last time. His stack just lost 100,000 chips in that exchange. But Mario now thinking about what to do. Fabio with an okay hand to open the button with. In his spot, as we said, he can open pretty much anything. The A5 suited is fine. And Mario opting to defend, currently in second place at this final table. And not the worst flopper, Fabio. It doesn't connect with the king, jack, or seven, but there are two diamonds there, and it smacks his range. Although his range should be wide, but it would normally smack his range. Mario checking. And I think Fabio would be continuing on most flops, including this one where he has a little bit of connectivity. Bet 60,000 into a pot of 220. It's a snap call by Mario. And does connect with the eight of clubs turn, but being that Mario did call a flop bet, I mean, obviously he could do that with hands like queen 10 and maybe other hands as well. Perhaps connecting with the eight really didn't improve him. Does check it back, hoping for that diamond on the river. And it is a diamond on the river, so it's a flush for Fabio. So unless Mario has a bigger flush, he will not win this hand, but let's see if Fabio can get some more chips into the pot or not. After it's checked over to him, he will be betting something. Looks like nearly a pot size bet, but we'll get an official count in a second. It is 350 and a snap call by Mario. And we do not know what Mario had, but we see the flush by Fabio. Maybe Mario will show his cards. But Mario now losing a big chunk of his stack, assuming he doesn't beat this flush. 
And really now, this invites Fabio to continue with the pressure. As Fabio now up to more than 3 million in chips. And as we mentioned before, there's nearly 6.2 million chips in play. So literally half the chips in play are now in Fabio's stack. The payup jumps are real. So the dynamic is going to be Fabio, 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 and players just hoping that they find the spot that they can get back into the mix while other players hit the rail. Is Nightbot not behaving? Yes, the password today is Malta2023. I'm curious if anybody guessed it before we officially released it. We had that situation in Bratislava and it was the best. But if you can guess the password, go for it. But it's a $500 free roll tonight, so why not grab some free money? I would be playing all three nights if I could. Certainly on Tuesday night with that 5K package up top, it's going to be a $5,500 free roll. So there's going to be a 5K package up top in that bad boy where you can be heading to our next stop at Party Poker Millions Dublin from October 31st to November 5th. It includes a 3K buy-in to a similar event, the Millions that you see here, along with another 2,000 in accommodations and spending money. Dominico been raising with his ace eight. And Fabio who continues to add to his chip stack is coming along for the ride from the cutoff with just a call. Mario and Eric quickly fold. So we're gonna go heads up to a flop. And top pair for Domenico. He was already head pre-flop, but with the four, seven, eight rainbow, pulling out ahead, Fabio's cards are still alive. So Domenico being one of the first players to take a pop from Fabio, maybe would have wanted some action there. Ooh, it looks like we're going to have the amazing Venice, AKA Santa Madonna. You can follow her on Instagram, I'm about to do an interview. So here we go. Okay, there may be a small delay. I'm trying to listen in to what they're talking about at the table. But we will have Venice interviewing some of the players that were eliminated throughout the stream. Quite a nice touch to have a sideline reporter. <laughs> So it looks like the blinds and the ante is posted, so we're just waiting one minute. But for those of you just tuning in, this is Jason Glatzer. Absolutely thrilled to be here in Malta for the Party Poker Millions. It started September 23rd. Numbers have been good. Side events have been amazing. The Grand Prix has a 1 million euro guarantee, has made it on to day two today. <laughs> Alberto, I'm sorry for your loss, but congratulations at the same time. You've just you know, made final table. How was it, the whole tournament? Uh, it was a good run. I ended up uh, chip leading the day one, so it was a really great start. Then, uh, on How the was the hand? Uh, the last hand I jam uh, nine big blind uh, from the hijack uh, pocket deuces. My opponent on the cutoff uh, uh, Regem uh, Ace Queen off, uh, 
I hit also a deuce on the flop, but uh, he made a straight on the turn and then uh, I brick the river. As it happens in poker. Yeah, it happens. It's a classic coin flip. And now what are your next steps after this? What are you going to do? Uh, live next steps, I think I will play in the WUSOP uh, Europe in Rozvadov or maybe the APT in Cyprus, but uh, I'm not sure. For sure uh, in Rozvadov. And then uh, now next steps will be online uh, for all the main event. Big stuff. Well, congratulations and good luck for the next upcoming events. Thank you, thank Alberto. Thank you very much. Grazie ragazzi, thank you and continuate the work. Thank you very much, Venice. It was amazing to hear that interview. And I did get a little bit of news during that interview, too. So we did hear that some of you do want to see the whole cards a little bit earlier. So that change will be made pretty soon. We will have that in place in about 20 minutes where we will see the whole cards from when the action reaches them and not when they either put in chips or fold. And we may already have that now actually because we have Matt Staples but we have a special guest in here and he has brought me coffee too so more than welcome of course the coffee is nice little bribe though but we have the amazing Jonathan Rabb about to join us he's been the media coordinator of the party poker million so he's going to join us for about 20 30 minutes share a little bit about what's going on I've been in the booth most of the time so I do not have the same global view that I normally do when I'm at events but meanwhile, while we're waiting for Jonathan, we have a hand brewing here. We have Fabio once again opening off his chip leading stack before Giuliano shoves his ace eight suited. Everybody else folds. Now is Fabio going to call? It's only 125,000 more. I do believe he's priced in, even though we can see he's dominated very often. His nine eight might be live. If not, then not. But it isn't that much for him to call. And Giuliano is at risk, but two to one favorite. in a great spot but the way fabio has been running we never know and it's a nine right out of the window followed by a six and a three it's the worst possible flop for giuliano he can't have a spade come and now he's miles behind drawing to just two aces and it's a king of spades on the turn so giuliano has just hit the rail regardless of the river in Sixth place for 19,400 euros, and it's a queen of hearts on the river. So nice run to Giuliano Boldis. And meanwhile, Fabio Peluso continues to roll up to 3.4 million. And now we can get his headset on. We can get Jonathan ready to go. Watch some hands. And our first guest of the day does have his headset on. So welcome, Jonathan. How are you? How have you been? Hi, Jason. I'm very well, thank you. It's it's been a long week here. For those who don't know, the media coordinator job starts at the beginning of the day, as soon as you wake up, when you look at the results that came in the night before, and it ends at about 2 a.m. when everything is over. And then, of course, you can't sleep, so you're here for the long haul. You've been doing an amazing job. I've been enjoying your updates as well. Uh, just keep me informed. It's a lot of information at times to uh, to take in. And so it's good to have too much information rather than not enough. So well done doing a very thorough job and can't think of a better man to be manning the, uh, the media coordination for Party Poker. Thank you very much, Jason. Very kind of you. But meanwhile, we have a, we have a hand here by Fabio. Fabio if you haven't been watching, Jonathan has been absolutely steamrolling. He's been leveraging his big stack and continuing to either uh, get players to fold or in the case that you just saw in the hand that you joined, he got there with his 8-9 suited, but basically because he's opening just about every hand, uh, that's going to happen. Well, Playing I mean extremely well. But we have a jam here by Dominico with the 9s. Staples forced to fold his king-queen. And likely Fabio is going to fold too. It's a completely different spot than he was in before. It's too big of a jam. So Dominico getting it through. He probably didn't necessarily want to call there either, especially with two over cards. You so know, what else Fab is happening? Fabio's, well, Fabio, you just mentioned him. He's been absolutely crushing it um, for the last couple of years. 
In fact, he hasn't got any live results until 2021. And now he's got you know, a huge, huge list on the Hendon mob uh, with over 600,000 in caches, uh, including a bracelet. Uh, he won a World Series bracelet in, in World Series Europe last year for over 200 grand. And he's continued to make lots and lots of final tables. So it really doesn't surprise me that uh, he is dominating this table. He seems very comfortable, and you mentioned like his results, but his posture, his experience, it's evident that this is a guy that definitely put in his time also online if he was just showing up on the live scene. But meanwhile, we have Mario's turn to jam. No, it's not Mario, it's Eric jamming. Apologies, with the king-queen. It isn't a big shove. It's less than six big blinds. He would add 100,000 to his stack if everybody folds. We can see that Matt is about to fold. And the man that we were just talking about, Fabio, quickly calling. Could he be blessing back-to-back -back players with just a hand or two in between? We shall see. We see what Eric has with the king-queen. What is he up against? Up against 10, so he is racing to either double or hit the rail. Well, Fabio is looking for an even bigger chip lead if he hits and wins this. Or if he... Or if Eric fails to hit. Rather. And it's the strange spot where everybody at the table, besides Eric, is rooting for Fabio to win this flip. So they ladder up. And it's not looking good for Fabio this time, but it's looking amazing for Eric after flopping the top pair here. Even a 10 isn't good. He needs one of the three queens. Three of hearts on the turn, looking very good for Eric to double up. And the seven of diamonds on the river. So Eric gets there, doubles his stack to 520,000. Fabio is down to 3 million, still a lot more than what he came into the table with. So Eric getting the job done. That's his second short stack double at the uh, final table. And some of the little tidbits of information I've been sharing are, are thanks to actually Jonathan. Jonathan has his hands in many little pies, providing a lot of information to reporters, to commentators, to the media at large, the poker players as well through the Party Poker blog. So check out the Party Poker blog. Some of his great stuff is over there. A little bit of tidbit of information about Matt Staples now is that he is guaranteed his biggest ever live cash now given that his biggest cash before was 23,000 euros for 10th place in the Party Poker Millions, the same event, but in Barcelona last year. So I believe he's guaranteed, is it a minimum of 24 and a half now for fifth place? Yes, and this doesn't surprise me. I met Matt in Barcelona and he wasn't playing a lot of live poker, but online he shared with me, this is cool, Jason, uh, 93,000 top prize. I have three online scores that are 93,000. And of course, me being me, exactly 93,000. He's like, no, of course not, not exactly 93,000. But he, he can have like this nice little mirror image where his top live cache matches his top online caches to show that he can do it in both realms. Yeah, I think he's had a good week here. Other things going on. I mean, we've had 33 tournaments at this festival. Not all of them have taken place so far. There's still a few more to come. And a large number of these were satellites. But you know, we've had, overall, a, a fairly busy festival. And I'll just let you know about the Grand Prix, which we are going to be featuring on this stream in two days' time on the final. That is now into day two. And that was the big guaranteed event here with one million guaranteed. It had eight starting flights and as of this morning was the last starting flight flight h and they actually hit 290 players so they surpassed the 1 million guarantee for a total of 1 million and 11 thousand and they have 2237 players in total but meanwhile back to the action we had matt opening up we do not know the cards a button for a min raise and then we had a big blind defend here on a 7-3 king rainbow flop It looks like we're going to go into this hand slightly blind. Ah, welcome, Dramatic Degen. Thank you for joining us. Good to see you again. And it looks like a continuation bet here by Staples. And a jam! So Staples losing some of his stack. So our hero. Mario gets that one through. 
There are whole cards shown, Clutchy. Uh, what happened here was that it's not going to necessarily happen every single hand. There, there could be times where something needs to be updated, but 95% of the time we will have whole cards, rest assured. So, so I was chatting to Mario actually before the final table. Um, uh, he's uh, his, his Greek heritage, but he lives in um, in Essex, and he started playing poker quite a long time ago. And he actually had a score back in 2014 uh, in the UK, but then kind of gave up playing for a while. But like so many people, he started playing online again during COVID. Enjoyed that again, went back on the live scene and scored uh, a really good result earlier this year in France. Um, so now he's focusing on live poker and this is a second significant final table for him within four months. I mean, from watching a little bit of Matt online, uh, I'm not surprised that he is capable of making uh, final tables in this level of buy-in, this level of talent that was in the field. He has put a lot of effort into his game, has a good network of people also to learn from, including his brother, Jamie. And a lot of people learn from him as well. You know, he's a regular Twitcher and many people following his stream on there. So Fabio adding uh, more chips to his stack. We should have our graphics back soon. But in the meantime, we will try to do old school. I mean, I occasionally commentate things like basketball and other sports that I follow. So we will do it without graphics if we have to. But we have graphics back. Matt Staples with the 8-4 suited. 8-4 suited on 840K in his stack. You like those things too, I see. I always like these like number coincidences that have. I really love the Matt story about the 93,000 being his top uh, online cash and it being the top prize here. Yeah, I'm all over that I kind of stuff, that stuff as well. When you look at all these spreadsheets of all these uh, names of players and results, you do see a lot of these little number coincidences. So Fabio, once again opening, he'll be opening wide. He'd probably be opening this even if he was shorter. King three suited from the cutoff in an unopened pot, but he wouldn't be doing it likely as one of the short stacks. And forcing you see Gala to fold his a6. So if you're getting players to not defend their aces, uh, you can be doing this all day long. If it's just really the top top of the range that they're gonna play back at you at. It gives you liberty to really have a VPIP near 100% and unopened pots. It also means you can float some people if you notice they're opening a little bit wide and play it in position and push them off. There's so many things you can do, three bet them. But you also have to be careful not to punt away your stack. So there's a careful line you need to toe. But Fabio is doing it brilliantly, just playing small ball and quietly adding to his stack. He had the one hiccup against Eric. It didn't really affect him too much. And when big stacks have been jamming on him, we haven't necessarily seen his cards, but we can assume that it was one of these any two situations. Meanwhile, Domenico thinking of, uh, well, it is from the small blind, just completing from the blinds. And in a minute, I'm going to ask you about what's happening in the Grand Prix, Jonathan, because we are in the basement here. Not literally, but we are in a back room somewhere in the casino. I'm just going to pull up the top 10 chip counts going into day two so that we can find out who went into day two with the best chance of winning. But meanwhile, we have Matt Staples with the decision to make. It's a raggedy ace in a limp pot. He does just jam. So adding some chips, that's the safest move in that kind of spot. If you ran into a monster, though, it would look a little bit bad. But players can't really be affording to limp with their premium holdings from the small blind at this standpoint either. Of course, they could be a little sneaky sneaky, but in general, they're going to be raising a lot of their premium holdings from any position.
Yeah, the tech team back car is working very hard, so I'm glad that you appreciate that as well. Been doing a fantastic job all week. It was an absolute pleasure to work alongside them yesterday during the influencer game and also uh, later on the Oviral cash game, which was absolutely bonkers. I'm not sure if you watched any of that, Jonathan, but it was crazy. I didn't watch much of the cash game. I watched a little bit of the sit and go. Um, I was kind of rooting for Kim to win that. He's a friend of mine. Um, and he was kind of a late entrant into the sit and go earlier in the day. So I had helped to get him a seat in that. And was uh, he came second in the end, which I think he was pretty happy with, although disappointed not to get the trophy. Yeah, he told me he w that that's exactly what he told me. Like he was, he was uh, enjoyed the experience. He does play poker home games, so he was one of the players that actually seemed to know what he was doing. And pretty much everybody at the table was playing fairly competently in that uh, creator's crown. It was a 5K sit and go with seven players, eight entries, 40K in the prize pool, and these guys are just clowning around in terms of. The antics, not in terms of how they were playing the poker. It was just so much fun to do. Sure, and I, I know that really two or three of them were not really poker players at all. And so you had a real mix, you know, some top pros and influencers who were maybe playing one of their first games of poker. Yeah, we had this character, Phidias, in the booth. And then my son, uh, overnight, uh, sent me a message. Did you really just do commentating with Phidias? And I'm like, yeah, he was a funny guy. Uh, I would have him back any time. He's like, you know who he is, because he follows all this uh, YouTube craze that I'm not following. And I'm like, well, I've heard a little bit about it. He's like, no, Dad, I have to tell everybody at school. He doesn't care about the poker, or this, that. He cares about Phidias. YouTubes are the, YouTubers are the superstars for the younger generation. Meanwhile, we have Eric with an effective jam, leaving 45K behind with the King-10 suited. Having not watched the early uh, few rounds of this final table, has, has there been any significant mistakes or has it all been fairly close to GTO? I mean, I'm not studying GTO to be fair. I'm a very good mathematical player, but I don't have time to study GTO, but I haven't seen any like unusual, unorthodox plays like what we saw yesterday. And that's not to be expected with this talented group, actually. I'm expecting that these players know GTO better than the commentator in this particular regard. I know ICM very well, but everything has changed very quickly. The good news is, is that you could still be profitable without being a GTO whiz, but you're going to fall behind eventually. It helps to know about it, even if you don't want to play that style. But Eric in a good spot here. I mean, we think he's in a good spot. Does flop middle pair. We do not know what Mario has. Mario with just the ace four, so gets a piece of it, but the bottom pair, but we'll need some help. Meanwhile, Eric is at risk. He could get his third double up of the final table. It's in an amazing spot to do so. Just has to fade fours and aces. And even if an ace comes on a turn, a jack can come on the river. The drama, the suspense. Drum roll. Ah, it's because we still aren't all in? Is that what's going on, or are they counting chips out? It looks like they're just counting out the chips. Because we definitely saw the cards turned over. So it's a 900,000 chip pot as well. Would put Mario in amazing shape if he could pull this one off. And it's a king of spades on the turn. So Ooh. still a four or an ace will do the job. But it's a seven of clubs on the river. Another double up for Eric. His third one at the table. And now has a healthy stack of 900,000. Meanwhile, Mario, our player from the United Kingdom, down to 530,000. And blinds will go up soon enough to uh, 50k big blinds. That's a great start for Eric. I mean, he came to this final table with and this is the second shortest stack on 215,000. Know, he might have been expecting that you know, it could have been a short final table for him. And now he's sitting there with nearly a million and in the mix. Yeah, Eric was one of the players that, let's say, wasn't too thrilled about the fact that we had a little bit of a break before the final table because of his short stack situation. And it, you get a little bit nervous. It's like coming back to a day two or a day three with, like, 
under 10 big blinds, you know, you, you just kind of want to get into the action immediately, you know, that's... But the rest of the players seem very grateful to have the time. It is that they're playing for a lot of money. It gives them time to refresh their brains. Perhaps even study a little bit about who else is at the table. Go back and review some of their plays and come up with the proper strategy about how to approach the final table. Indeed, you know, it's always worth researching your opponents. This is amazing, though. Look at this. Uh, Fabia with half the chips, 3.2 million, and not a single other player with a seven-figure stack at the moment. So it is Fabio's tournament to lose. Of course, any player can make a run. Not quite half the chips in play, but close. Fabio would be a better than an even money bet at this point to win the event if we did have live odds. We can make a game in the chat if we take out, let's say, Matt, who everybody's rooting for, and Fabio, who's chip leader, between the other three, who you think will win or go the furthest. And, you know, it is, like I said, it's very worthwhile for you to study who your opponents are before you start. And if any of the viewers out there want to know more, a bit more about these players, if you go to the Party Poker blog, the latest post, all the players' names, uh, they've got their links to their hand and mob profiles. So you can just click on them easily and see what the caliber of these final table players are if you are interested as well. Lavas Vakaris, Lithuanian pro. It's nice to see somebody from the country that I am living in. Hope all is well. If you know me, you can shout out your real name, but this is Jason Glatzer coming to you live at Puerto Maso Casino in Malta. But I will be playing in Vilnius uh, the second weekend in October on Saturday evening, so you can also introduce yourself to me in Vilnius. And Nightbot, actually, I'm getting along with Nightbot today. Maybe sometimes I have issues with Nightbot. I have a love-hate relationship with uh, with Nightbot over the years. He's a regular on the on the stream chat. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes there's trolling, you know. And uh, but I, actually, Nightbot on the Party TV channel has never trolled me. But I've been trolled by Nightbot on plenty of other channels <laughs> with weird commands. I think the best time to troll you would be maybe about seven hours into the stream. Oh, yeah, when I've had, like, the coffee wear down, the brain is uh, maybe a little bit fried. That's the best time to be trolled, of course. Like, at three in the morning last night would have been perfect. So Mario with the Cowboys, the blinds have gone up to 25,000, 50,000. So it has about a 10 big blind stack. We may be seeing a shove or an effective shove here. And does just jam it in. Let's see if anybody else wakes up with anything. Eric, not so much with the suited 69. And Domenico, the gentleman that is always in Malta, grinding away at big events, lays it down. Domenico actually does have a little bit of a live rail as well. I can't see it, but before the action there were several players rooting Domenico on before the start of action. Yeah, so Domenico, a popular player as well. Domenico comes from Sicily, which is very, very close to Malta. Um, it takes only about 25 minutes to get a flight there, and for sure there's much more poker in Malta than in Sicily. There's more arancini though in Sicily. It's very good arancini in Sicily, I might add. I particularly like the ones that have like pistachio in the middle. Oh pistachio yeah, those pistachio. are good. In Catania, there's this amazing uh, arancini place. I am trying to think of the name of it to give them actually a shout out, but it's slipping my mind. Maybe I'll remember later, but meanwhile, we're going to hop back into the action. Mario just picked up a little bit of chips by uh, jamming his kings. Didn't get any love from any player, but Better than getting your Cowboys cracked. Our short stack hero, who's no longer super short, Eric Lindquist. A local face, actually, even though he is from Sweden. Min raising it up. And let's see what Matt decides to do. This is certainly defendable, even off his stack size. But Matt may want to preserve his stack. 
I do think that we will see him call. If he senses some weakness with the button open, we could see even something fancier than just a call as well. So all three options in play. Personally, when I'm in similar spots, though, my instinct is to just call, and that's what Matt is doing. So mano y mano, Matt versus Eric, and Matt pulls ahead after connecting with his jack, but there is a queen there that Eric can rep. So it's a check by Matt. Is Eric going to continue? This would be the kind of flops that, in general, a tight player opening from late position would, but he checks it through and mm. look at this, gets there with the king on the turn, now has two pair, pulling ahead of Matt. Matt needs a jack or a diamond though, or a 10 for that matter, so tons of outs still there for Matt, but he may not be able to realize them because if Eric bets here, it's gonna be awfully hard for Matt to stay in the hand, depending on how big Eric bets just based on the stack sizes. Obviously, this plays out so much differently in a cash game. You know, I mean, even he hits the 10 here, he's looking at the idiot end of the straight, so. so. But he's got a flush draw. Yeah, even if we take out the, the, the 10s, he still has a lot of equity here. But he may feel that he's not priced in with this bet sizing. He would have had to fold to a jam, that's for sure. But Eric trying to squeak out a little bit more value, even on the super wet board. It's almost the perfect amount. And I like how Matt is taking his time, probably trying to calculate how much is in the pot, how much he would have left in a stack if he called and didn't get there. Perhaps thinking about what happens if he jams with all this equity he has. Is he getting a fold? It's really putting Matt to the test with this bet, Eric, certainly. I would almost like that move if it wasn't at this stage of the final table, just the jam here. He does call, folks, so saving himself some chips will have seven big blinds if things do not work out for Matt, but plenty of cards can come on the river to push him ahead. This is not, not one, one of them, <laughs> the six of hearts on the river, but Matt is probably not going to spaz out here and jam his stack. He does check. Eric may jam here, but he may opt. Am I being trapped by a 9-10? There's not really too many other hands that he would be concerned about that he isn't absolutely crushing, and he should be trying to go for some more value. But also thinking things over. And he does make the move. Not quite a jam, but close enough. It is a jam because it's basically covering Matt's stack. And Matt with the easy fold. So Matt now, the short stack. We're going to need a Cinderella story out of you, Matt. Well, if the shoe fits. If the shoe fits. So our Twitch chat is not very thrilled with the outcome of that hand. We do have mostly Matt Staple fans in the Party Poker Twitch channel. I'm not allowed to play favorites, but you're allowed to play favorites. Are you rooting for Matt? I have no favorites. No favorites? No favorites. Yeah, he did have I, a lot of outs there. You're I, I, absolutely I like right, Muskets. These, I like all these guys. You know, I think that they would all make a good winner. Whoever ends up taking the trophy, Matt would be a great we story. We are here with Giuliano, who has come sixth in our tournament. Yeah. Giuliano, congratulations Thank and you. unfortunate, but still you've done very well. How was it for you this whole tournament? Mm. <laughs> Comsi <laughs> comsa. Yeah. yeah, it could be better, but uh, it's okay. I, I won some important hand uh, in the past days. Today, I... Um, but you've done very well for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. And after this, are you going to play any extra events or...? Yes, but uh, I will decide tomorrow or the day after. And so not you're chilling? Let's see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. cool. Well, Giuliano, well done. Congratulations and thank you very much. <laughs> Bye. Grazie.
That was the lovely Venice interviewing Giuliano Bolas, who finished not so long ago in sixth place for 19,400 euros. So thank you very much, Santa Madonna. You can follow her on Instagram. But meanwhile, we have the future of spin. So check out the promo above. I will be playing these. I got to watch a preview of this earlier. It is very cool. It's like a spin. But when you enter, you get this amazing graphic. And instead of having like two, three, five fixed numbers that you can be playing for, what actually happens in Spins Overdrive is that the car just keeps going, the, the, the engine keeps going. And then when it stops, that's your multiplier. So when we did it just for fun before, I got a 2.76 multiplier. So it did not hit that 240K, but it was fun your anyway. Your car did not have a full tank of gas. No. But to get that full tank of gas, you know, that's not going to happen to everyone every day. That's uh, once in a blue moon kind of thing. But it's nice to have up there. You know, it's more about be nice when we get above three. You know, that's because uh, it's a three max game. And that happens often enough. Meanwhile, we have Eric here opening up. It looks like with a min raise with the ace nine from the cutoff. And we do have an Eric fan in the chat. So we have a... Uh, MRZ rooting for Eric. So let's see if he can get it done again. Eric is the local, as you said. He's, he's from Sweden, but he's lived in Malta for many years. Haven't played poker with Eric, but have seen him around. Obviously knows what he is doing to make a final table of this event. And really, everybody's playing very good poker at the moment. Fabio defending with the A5. He can afford to do that as the chip leader. And not the worst flop for A5, flopping the open ender. Eric's still ahead with his ace nine. Fabio's five is no longer good because that would give Eric a wheel. But this is the kind of flop that favors the big blinds range rather than the cutoffs range. We'll see if Eric checks it back. And if he does, that invites Fabio to be betting a lot of turns, whether he gets there or not, especially if the board pairs. Does check it back. It did look like it went check check on the flop. And it's a six of hearts on the turn. It's a miracle card here for Fabio hitting his straight. However, he's likely not to, going to be able to get that much action out of it. There are two hearts on the board, but other than that, he may try to check to get some action from Eric, but it wouldn't really follow his story if he's betting when he doesn't have it, and when he does have it, he's not betting. So is continuing along with his consistency and betting 125000 and Eric not snap folding, but I think he's going to have to come to that conclusion that even if he feels he's ahead, this isn't his spot. And Fabio doing it again. It's, that's a very much a big blind hand, that one, that fought for sure. So I don't think, Jonathan, we're going to have you that much longer. So we didn't really get that into this Grand Prix, which is, I would say, in, in many ways, the highlight of this festival because it has a 1 million euro guarantee. So first of all, was this 1 million guarantee met? It was. We, they got there with, as I um, yeah. briefly did mention it earlier, 2,237 players creating a prize pool of 1 million and 11,000. So really just got, <laughs> got there. there. It was it, it was squeaky time in the back office for a while, but uh, um, there were some cheers went up when the number was met. But talking about locals, and and up until up until today, before we had the, the turbo fight, the, the chip leader was an Italian, uh, Giuseppe Fava. But we picked to the ch overnight. Chip I don't mean lead. to cut you off, but we have an all in here by Matt Staples. Okay. We'll come back to the Grand Prix story. Mario, not instantly folding would be for a significant portion of his stack. Must have something if he wants to count. What sometimes players do is they just like to know how much a player has so they can keep it mentally. So it could be even that case, you get, a, you get an exact count rather than a visual one. I'm very good at just looking at a player's stack and being very close as to what they would have. 
but that's also because I've live reported probably about two to three hundred different events, if not more. But those skills come into play at the poker table as well. So Matt getting it through, nothing to see here. We do see some cards apparently appearing on the board, but I think that's just because the dealer is shuffling over the reader. But back to you, Jonathan. So yeah, tell so, us more so about the Grand Prix. From a vocal perspective, it's fantastic. Uh, Fausto Tantillo, who's from Malta, he ended up with a chip lead after all of the fights, and he got it in the turbo fight. He had ended up with almost 1.5 million chips. And in fact, only nine players broached the one million barrier. I have a good story too. about that bubble, too, because I, right before I went live, I bumped into uh, my friend David Lappin, and he played this uh, final flight, and he was down to just 125,000, which doesn't sound like a lot, but the blinds were up because it was a turbo to 25, 50,000. A table just broke, and he was going to be next into the big blind, but a shorter stack actually moved into the big blind. He went out, and David was able to make it through to day two, and the blinds are rolling back to 6,000, so he gets a 20 big blind stack. <laughs> That's one hand away from disaster from him. But unfortunately for him, he did play the side event yesterday and, and finished on the direct bubble. He didn't tell me that part of the story, but I basically told him, I have to run. Tell me in three minutes what happened. And... Uh, David being David, he was able to pack a lot of information in that three minutes. But best of luck to him, but also good luck to all of the day two players. Thank you everybody for playing that. You're all part of uh, helping us uh, make this event a grand success. Without you, who knows? And it's really getting to the interesting part of it now because we're on day two. Tomorrow will be day three and we'll really be focusing on it uh, from a blogging perspective and seeing what's happening there. And we've got another final on Monday with uh, the Grand Prix. Meanwhile, Fabio waking up with Queens this time. We have seen him open up bid and Mario is not going to believe him. But even with the short stack, it wouldn't matter. These chips have to get in to 215,000 jam. Let's see if anybody else is coming along. If not, we know Fabio is going to snap call these queens. And he does just immediately toss out the chip. So it's going to be queens against ace king with Mario at risk with the big slick. The classic coin flips of coin flips. Oh my god, look at this flop. Flopping top pair for Mario, only to run into the set of ladies by Fabio, but a 10 would push Mario back ahead. The 9 of diamonds does not help. He needs his 4 outer, or otherwise he will join the others on the rail. Yes. And it is the 10 of clubs on the river! Oh my god! Wow! The emotions by Mario, the like thumbs said, up, instead of going out in fifth place for 24,510 euros, goodness. he Ten gets million. to double his stack up to 55, 555,000, all fives going on in there. Happy days for Mario, still has some work to do. Not the best news for your Matty Ice fans out there, but great news for Mario and good news for, uh, for us too. I mean, we love the action, the drama, the suspense. Uh, Fabio can't win every single pot or it gets a little bit boring, so Fabio's stack takes a tiny dent. It wasn't really that big of a double up. <laughs> Meanwhile, players like Eric Dominico and Matt have to feel a little bit of disappointment about that untimely river card, at least for them. It's a great feeling when that happens. Maybe your luck is changing. So Jonathan, tomorrow we have the Mystery Bounty final table. Uh, what is the buy-in at that event? Uh, and do we know what exactly, how many they're playing down to? I may be putting you on the spot a little bit because the focus hasn't been this far on the Mystery Bounty event. So feel free to come back with that information because we have a captivated audience that wants to know exactly what our schedule is going to be. Well, the buy-in for the event is uh, 1K, 1,100. But half of that's going to the prize pool and half to the mystery bounty like traditionally in mystery bounty tournaments it doesn't kick in the bounties until day two 
So I don't actually have the information about how many they're going to play down to. So I will come back to that and I'll drop you that information and you can pop it into the feed, into the stream at some point later on tonight. Okay. I mean, if you have it in time, why not come in and just share it with us live near the end of the evening? Assuming we're not like in heads up action, uh, we can share then a little bit about the plans, how many entered, what the prize pool is looking like, if the top bounties have been set yet. All this fun information, but really looking forward to that as well. Mystery bounties are a lot of fun. Hopefully some of those big bounties are still alive at the final table as well to even add even further because then you have mystery bounty and ICM considerations. Sometimes what happens in mystery bounty events, those big bounties are taken out before the final table and then it plays out similar to ICM rather than like a PKO final table. Well, I'm going to go and do my, my job, which is fact finding and find out all that info. I know there is a 5,000 bounty. I don't know if that's the biggest one, but uh, I'll come back. Okay, Armed very with good. information at some point. Very good. I appreciate you joining us and almost equally, and this is going to sound selfish, appreciate that you brought me the coffee that's been sitting behind me that I'm going to start enjoying now that it's cooled off a little bit. So Stone thank you cold, for both probably. things. And, uh, yeah, hope to see you back uh, either later today or you can come in tomorrow and give us a nice little update in between hands. But meanwhile, you might as well stay for this one because we have a jam. We know that Matt is likely going to fold unless for some reason he does not have queen six suited. But he is thinking about it. He would actually be in a good spot more or less. I mean, not ahead, but more or less flipping. But... It is still just queen six suited. More than fine to call to like a three, four big blind shove, but this would be for his entire stack of 13 big blinds. Matt coming up with the same conclusion. Domenico taking it away from the big blind with the uh, suited king. And unfortunately, Jonathan, all good things must come to an end. It's been a pleasure to have you and hope to have you back sometime soon. Thank you very much, Jason. I've certainly enjoyed it and hope to see you again. That was Jonathan Rapp, the media coordinator for Party Poker Live Millions Malta, doing a fantastic job. Head on over to the Party Poker blog, see some of what he's been writing. Uh, he's also sharing information with a lot of external and internal people busy all day long, so it was nice to be able to snag him for as long as we had him, and maybe we can sneak him back into the booth later on this week, or maybe even later on today. We shall see. Apologies for ignoring the chat a little bit. So the buy in Saxo Man is 3,000 euros. There's a little bit of Italian going on in here, so I imagine that is rooting on some of the Italian players we have. Maybe Domenico. Maybe Fabio. But it's nice to see such a diverse group. And hope you are enjoying this action as much as I am. So Matt down to 640,000. The binds will still be 2550 for a little while longer. After that, they will go up to 30,000, 60,000. And continue to increase every 40 minutes from there. No, don't have a hand, Fabio. Talking Mario there talking about the Queens versus Ace King where he had the Ace King it was an Ace Queen Jack flop so it was had top pair but ran into a set by our chip leader Fabio it was a blank on the turn I think a nine but then a ten came raining down on the river for him to get his full double up instead of hitting the rail in fifth place. Disappointed the Matty Ice fans in our chat. Please the Mario fans though. Fabio was not affected too much by that because it was not a big stack shove with the Ace King. I think it was only four to five big blinds. So it's a limp pot between Fabio and Mario. Fabio actually pretty far ahead with his 9-4, now popping a piece of this four queen deuce flop with two hearts on it. And Mario uh, calling the min bet with his open ender. 
Got a queen on the turn, so now Fabio probably thinks that he is miles ahead. Eight bet. 75. Making the draws pay the price. Making those players with the deuces that are a little bit sticky there put a little bit more chips in. And maybe this 10 of diamonds slows it down, but I think based on the stack depth, it was He's still going to have to call a shove if Mario decides to bluff it off. Mario may go for it. It's him and Matt Staples as the minuscule stacks at this standpoint. So bets half his stack. It's going to be a snap call here by Fabio. Mario now down to fumes. Meanwhile, Fabio back up to 3.5 million. I think his high point was 3.6 million. So Fabio making the recovery. Mario did try. He did not commit his whole stack. I don't know if that would have worked, but this small bet size did not work anyway. And uh, maybe the Matty Ice fans are now a little bit happier. Love this chat. Even my vocabulary is being trolled. Beck car 94, where are you from, sir? Or ma'am. I'm going to have to think of some old school terms for you guys to, uh, to whip out on some of these old all-in and calls. It's really just the first thing that comes into my head. I get very excited, both when I'm watching streams and also commentating streams. Fabio will be opening almost all buttons that are unopened to him. Certainly would be opening queen 10 with a shorter stack as well. Fabio also had a rail going before the start of the final table. Fabio opting for a min bet raising size. And it's a jam by Mario. Let's see what he has. It's going to be a call, obviously, based on the fact that he's only jamming three plus big blinds. So we'll find out soon enough, even if the graphics don't tell us. It's only 70,000 more for Fabio to call. He may want to get a count just to be sure. So the chip counts may actually be off because I'm hearing something about 700 something thousand. That would change things quite a lot, but maybe I misheard. If it is 170,000 and it's only 70,000 to call, I think Fabio would have already flicked that chip in. He does fold, and Mario with the Cowboys, so it's quite a good fold, but Mario must have more chips in that 370, or Fabio has to call it. Let's see if we can get a visual look on his stack right now. The graphics are blocking it. But it looks like he has about a million in his stack now, a little give or take. Up, down, up, down, up, down. So guys asking about the chips, it really just takes missing one or two hands and then the chip counts get a bit thrown off. What's going to happen is we're going to have likely a break after this fine level and then the chip counts will be fully accurate after that. So maybe for the next three or four hands, we're looking at trying to eyeball the chip stacks a little bit. But it does look like at least Fabio's stack has to be correct. Fabio doing it again with an open. No Cowboys for Mario this time. Eric folding his suited ace four. And 
Mr. Gala here with the King Queen sitting on about 15 to 16 big blinds. Perhaps thinking about whether he should shove or not. And it is a jam. Fabio is going to snap fold and Domenico picking up some free chips. So that's twice Fabio has been forced to fold after opening in recent hands. Did not cost him too much and very often his min races are getting through. Mm. So and so. Mm. Um, I mean, he, if he call... Uh, he, he has six again. For those of you just tuning in, this is Jason Glatzer live at the Party Poker Live Millions Malta. We are down to the final five players of the 3,000 buy-in Millions main event. Matt Staples is among those players competing for the 93,000 euro top prize. Does have his work cut out for him, but anything can happen. Just takes one hand for everything to change. And either way, we were likely going to have Matt on the stream. We did have him in the comms booth yesterday. I'm happy that he is not in the comms booth today. Not that I wouldn't love to do commentating with Matt like we did yesterday, but that he is instead at the final table doing his thing, showing he's not just an online beast, that he can get it done live as well. And as we mentioned earlier, this 93,000 top prize would match his biggest scores that all took place online. He has three online scores that are around that amount. So it would be a nice balance. The weights would be balanced. 93 for best live, 93 for best online. But I think a few other players have something to say about that, including our chip leader, Fabio, with more than half the chips in play. So we're being asked a few questions here. So while we're waiting for the next hand to be dealt, I can give it an answer. We had 154 players, 27 re-entries in the event that the prize pool was 406,560 euros. The final 16 players came into today already locking up 7,210 euros. When the unofficial final table began off the stream, they've already bumped that up to 11,700 euros. And by the time our stream began, it was 13,700 13, euros locked up. Adam Howery from Hungary collected that prize. Alberto Sigliano collected the seventh place prize of 15,900. Giuliano Bullis, sixth place for 19,400. And last but not least, we have 24,510 euros for the fifth place prize for the next player out. It just moves up all the way up to there to a 93,000 euro top prize. So the letters have gotten very serious at this standpoint. So Mario with the short stack and the mystery cards, I think we've established that Mario has more chips than that 270,000. Goes check, check. And maybe Fabio will make a play now. He's done this before when it's been checked back to on a flop. He's bet the turn. Exactly what happened. Mario folding. And it, that was actually Mario betting out there. So Mario winning the pot. Apologies there. <coughs> For those of you in Malta, I'll be hanging around a little bit tonight after the stream. But you may not want to hang out with me tonight because there is a party at Club 22 starting at 9 o'clock. You can just head to the Party Poker Welcome Desk, pick up your bracelet. It is open to all whether you've won a package or not. So have a good time at the party. I may come for some dancing, probably not too much drinking in me this evening. But the one thing that party knows how to do better than anyone else 
there's a lot of things that party knows how to do but the one thing that comes to mind at the moment is the party the players party at party poker are always a blast even if you don't know anybody by the time you leave you're going to know so many people so domenico opening up the cutoff for a min raise and mario contemplating what to do counting out his chips and it does look like a three bet Graphics are blocking the chips, but we will get the amount shortly. And it is a three bet, the 390. We do not know if it's for the majority of Mario's stack or not, but if we can take a look at his chip stack, we will have a general idea. We have established that some of the short stacks are slightly off for the next few hands. And we have two mystery cards. I'm curious what Domenico is thinking about. I do like the table talk. As we mentioned earlier, Domenico has played a lot of events on the island of Malta over the years. He says he folded a king, and then Mario showing an ace. Yeah, Poker Bros, I had fun with you in uh, Barcelona. I can't say I went to every social outing because I was quite busy. I'm pretty sure you have also seen me dancing in person, Poker Bros, but... Uh, the less footage, the better of that. I just want to relax, have some fun, talk to some players. The usual stuff for me. Enjoying things in my own way. Was I singing? Nobody wants to hear me sing. I mean, I'm singing all the time, but to sing in karaoke would be embarrassing. I hope I didn't do that. I wouldn't be surprised if I did, though. <laughs> Meanwhile, Fabio, who's been a little bit quiet lately, has now a spot in an open pot with a king. Will be min-raising, back to his usual antics. Fabio putting on a display on how to play when you have half the chips and nobody else really has anything going. And once again gets walked, so adding 125,000 to his stack. It doesn't matter, you're gonna see what the... <laughs> Good answer. It would be nice to see a Poker Bras in Dublin. That is our next stop for the Party Poker Live Tour on October 31st and November 5th. And it would be nice to see everybody in the chat at that point in time. With his 8 3 diamonds. It looks like we are on a break or on a commercial. Uh, it looks like we're talking about the Party Poker Millions Dublin. There we go. Timing is good. But back to the action. Fabio with an ace this time. Once again, an op unopened pot. Once again, will be opening. Just jamming it. So the min raise out the window. Just saying if you have it, come on. Call. Let's gamble. If not, I'm taking your blinds. Mario folding. Eric just with the queen six suited. And Gala with a very strong hand for high. Showing the deuce. Having a good laugh. It's a good start. can be good start for me. So Domenico having a good time. It's good to see. Of course. Slap. Yeah. 
just need it. So asking how do you think how many people are watching this final table just because Staples is playing on it. I don't think we'll ever find that question out because Matthew is going to be on final tables all week long. I don't think he will necessarily have time to play the mystery bounty. Uh, so maybe we won't see him on tomorrow's final table. Maybe that could be a judge. But I'd like to think that a lot of you are tuning in for this amazing final table action. Of course, it is an absolute pleasure to have Matt on the table. Eric with the fives. We have at least one Eric fan in the chat. Did he let go of the fives? That's interesting. No, he didn't let go of the fives. Didn't think he would. It looks like an effective jam, leaving a little bit of a stack behind, betting 500,000. Domenico folding and Matt Staples will also fold. So it wasn't Domenico that won that pot, so please ignore the graphic. It was Eric that jammed the fives. Domenico folded his queen jack. Well, you could be here for Matt, but maybe some of you will come back for me too. I mean, I fully understand. I would be here for Matt as well. Matt is an absolute hero. Does a lot of good content. Jamie as well, the two party poker ambassadors, the two brothers doing amazing things for party poker, providing amazing content on their stream. And I know I'm using the word amazing a lot, but it applies times a million what I am saying both heroes of mine. I love when people have such a passion for poker and then build something from nothing like Jamie and Matt both have and then develop such an amazing community like we see here. Okay, so there's a few people also here for Eric. Eric I recognize from around. Those of you watching from Malta know who I am most likely because I've either played with you, I've either reported on you or commentated on you over the past few years. It is kind of like a third home for me now in Malta. My home for those of you that are curious is Lithuania. Been living there for about 14 years. My second home is in Estonia and now my third home is in Malta. Meanwhile, Domenico with a ragged ace thinking and then rethinking into the muck. Matt just not getting cards. It's very frustrating in an open pot and a button after being so card dead to then just look down and you have eight deuce. But it makes what you need to do easy. It just goes into the muck. Meanwhile, Fabio getting a combination of some nice cards along with just a very impressive big stack playing style. Jamming it over the small blind and Mario showing his rags. Let's see if we could see what they are. It looks like one of them was maybe a 10. Does not matter. Mario folding. Fabio once again picking up chips back up to 3.5 million. The poker scene in Lithuania is tricky, is the best response to that. We are now allowed to play on the Party Poker Network, which is beautiful. So online, we do have a licensing scheme there, which Entain has properly gone through. Not all companies do. So massive props out to the Entain crew for their compliance. Uh, but we can play through the OptiBet client, which is also part of the Entain brand. Online, though, we do have some options, and then live, we have some great games in the casino, which recently expanded in terms of how many tables they can offer. But meanwhile, back to what we're supposed to be talking about. We are at the Party Poker Live Millions Malta. It looks like the players are going on a quick break. Here's a look at the chip counts before we head. We can see Fabio is at least at the moment running away with it, but blinds will go up to 30,000, 60,000 when the action resumes. See you back in about 15, 20 minutes.
and it's in an amazing spot to do so. It just has to fade fours and aces. And even if an ace comes on a turn, a jack can come on the river. The drama, the suspense. Drum roll. Ah, it's because we still aren't all in? Is that what's going on, or are they counting chips out? It looks like they're just counting out the chips. Because we definitely saw the cards turned over. So it's a 900,000 chip pot as well. Would put Mario in amazing shape if he could pull this one off. And it's a king of spades on the turn. So still a four or an ace will do the job. But it's a seven of clubs on the river. Another double up for Eric. His third one at the table. And now has a healthy stack of 900,000. Meanwhile, Mario, our player from the United Kingdom, down to 530,000. And blinds will go up soon enough to uh, 50k big blinds. That's a great start for Eric. I mean, he came to this final table with and this is the second shortest stack on 215,000. Know, he might have been expecting that you know, it could have been a short final table for him. And now he's sitting there with nearly a million and in the mix. Yeah, Eric was one of the players that, let's say, wasn't too thrilled about the fact that we had a little bit of a break before the final table because of his short stack situation. And it, you get a little bit nervous. It's like coming back to a day two or a day three with, like, under 10 big blinds. You know, you, you just kind of want to get into the action immediately. You know, that's... But the rest of the players seem very grateful to have the time. It is that they're playing for a lot of money. It gives them time to refresh their brains. Perhaps even study a little bit about who else is at the table. Go back and review some of their plays and come up with the proper strategy about how to approach the final table. Indeed. You know, it's always worth researching at, your opponents. This is amazing, though. Look at this. Uh, Fabia with half the chips, 3.2 million, and not a single other player with the seven-figure stack at the moment so it is Fabio's tournament to lose of course any player can make a run not quite half the chips in play but close Fabio would be a better than an even money bet at this point to win the event if we did have live odds we can make a game in the chat if we take out, let's say, Matt, who everybody's rooting for, and Fabio, who's chip leader, between the other three, who you think will win or go the furthest. And, you know, it is, like I said, it's very worthwhile for you to study who your opponents are. It's in an amazing spot to do so. It just does fold. And Mario with the Cowboys, so it's quite a good fold. But Mario must have more chips in that 370, or Fabio has to call it. Let's see if we can get a visual look on his stack. Right now, the graphics are blocking it. The classic coin flips of coin flips. Oh my god, look at this flop. Flopping top pair for Mario, only to run into the set of ladies by Fabio, but a 10 would push Mario back ahead. The 9 of diamonds does not help. He needs his 4 outer, or otherwise he will join the others on the rail. And it is a 10 of clubs on the river. Oh my Oh my god! Wow! The emotions by Mario, the, the thumbs up, instead of going out in 5th place for 24,510 euros, he gets to double his stack up to 555,000, 555, all 5's going on in there. Happy days for Mario. Still has some work to do. Not the best news for your Matty Ice fans out there, but great news for Mario. 
and good news for uh, for us too. I mean, we love the action, the drama, the suspense. It does fold, and Mario with the Cowboys. We thought it was just one island, but there's magic in numbers. And this place? Well, it's so much more. We thought we knew these waters, but it's a museum down here. And through these caves, you uncover some unbelievable views. Just make sure you snap a shot from up there. On hop off boats all hits different when the locals lead the way. We thought we knew dining experiences, but this is something else. <laughs> By night, you can soak up the sights of the beautiful city under the stars. And by day, you can get a thrill in a whole other kind of way.
adventure is out there. You just gotta paddle to it. Before, you can jump right in. And you know what they say. Friends who leap together, stay together. The best way to explore the islands? Well, take your pick. Need a timeout? Turns out, flow state isn't only found in yoga barns. Go off the beaten track and you'll find wine tastes so much sweeter. And the stories last longer when you pick the grapes straight from the vine. So cheers. cheers to sunsets from a beach club, a rooftop pool, a 12th century church, or even a cliff top. We thought we knew how to sell it, but not like this. Come on! The best thing about it? When you think you've seen it all and done it all. There's always so much more to explore.
first. We thought it was just one island, but there's magic in numbers. And this place? Well, it's so much more. We thought we knew these waters, but it's a museum down here. And through these caves, you uncover some unbelievable views. Just make sure you snap a shot from up there. A hop-on, hop-off boat tour hits different when the locals lead the way. We thought we knew dining experiences, but this is something else. By night, you can soak up the sights of the beautiful city under the stars. And by day, you can get a thrill in a whole other kind of way. Adventure is out there. You just gotta paddle to it before you can jump right in. And you know what they say. Friends who leap together, stay together. The best way to explore the islands? Well, take your pick. Timeout? Turns out, flow state isn't only found in yoga barns. Go off the beaten track and you'll find wine tastes so much sweeter. And the stories last longer when you pick the grapes straight from the vine. So, so cheers. cheers to sunsets Woo! from a beach club, a rooftop pool, a 12th century church, or even a cliff top. We thought we knew how to sell it, but not like this. Come on! The best thing about it? When you think you've seen it all and done it all. There's always so much more to explore.
that's why I gotta double up. Welcome back. This is Jason Glatzier, your commentator for the week at the Party Poker Live Millions Malta. We are down to just five players in the hunt for the elusive and exclusive Party Poker Millions main event trophy along with the 93,000 euro top prize. Matt Staples, who you see in the background there with the white t-shirt, is among the players at the table. But we've hopped already right into the action and Domenico, with about 13 and a half big blinds, thinking about what he wants to do under the gun. Now we're five-handed, so under the gun is also the hijacked. It looks like a little bit more than a min-raise. No, it is a min-raise, opening to 120. And Matt, who is down to just crumbs at the moment, unfortunately, needs to find the spot. Perhaps would have done something in an unopened pot with the King-7, but opting to fold in this particular situation with Dominico already opening up the action. And nobody else showing up with anything. So Dominico picking up some much needed chips, adding 150,000 to his stack. 120,000 of that is gonna go right back into the pot now because he is the big mind. So most poker tournaments these days, if you're playing online, it's a little bit of an adjustment for you because live tournaments have moved to a big blind anti format. What that means if you are uncertain is that the big blind, every time it comes around, has to put in not only the big blind, but the same amount as the big blind into the ante. Basically, anteing for the entire table does speed up the action. Allows more hands to be dealt per blind level. So players love it. I love it. But in online poker, having a big blind ante doesn't make sense because everything moves at the same speed. So this time, Matt is jamming our hero a four big blind jam with the king queen suited. And Eric with a bad ace thinking about what to do here. Eric is the sole player at the final table remaining that calls Malta his home. Originally from Sweden, as you can see from his flag, and now thinking about doing something, and he is committing his entire stack with the ace three, so. Matt will be at risk. And meanwhile, what's going on here? Domenico waking up with the ace jack. Now in really a tough spot. Now if Eric folds, the spot isn't tough at all from the big blind. He just snaps it. But Eric would be putting him to a test for the majority of his stack. Meanwhile, this reduces the likelihood that we will see an ace on the board. So it's a Good news for Matt Staples. He still needs to get there, but his equity goes up significantly with the two players blocking each other off. Domenico. And Domenico calling two. We have a three way all in. Wow. And now it's looking really bad for Eric. With Domenico covering him, Matt needs some help at, as well. Eric and Matt at risk. And it is a dry 3-7 jack flop for Matt, but Domenico improving to top pair. Eric with bottom pair. But the queen and king still alive. Matt calling out for a spade. And it's a six of hearts on the turn, so not the card that Matt needs or that Eric needs. Eric drawing to a three, Matt drawing to a queen or a king. Otherwise, it's Domenico gonna have a big stack eliminating two players at the same time. And it's a queen on the river! Matt gets there for a triple up. Meanwhile, it is Eric Winquist out in fifth place and Domenico Gala does win a decent side pot, so he made a little bit on that hand. But we do have Eric Winquist out in fifth place for 24,510 euros. Matt has gained some breathing room, but still needs to gather some more chips. But all four remaining players have locked up now 31,900 euro. Much more to play for with a 93,000 euro top prize, but 
What a river there for Matt Staples. A triple up and a ladder up. Agree with you fully, Matt, 5820. Amazing. Despite going out in fifth place, I know Eric would have wanted to go a bit further. He did share that he would be happy with fifth, and I'm sure that we are going to see an exit interview with him as well. Very friendly guy, a local here in Malta, as we already mentioned. We do have one semi-local left. I consider Domenico Gala to be semi-local because every time there's a big festival, I see Domenico around. Not a player that I got to know, but a player that I'm used to seeing in big events in Malta, such as the Party Poker Live Millions. And Matt getting a walk, perhaps would have been willing to call a shove there with the King Seven suited, but we shall never know. What a river, hey, Matt. Up. And Mario uh, from giving Matt some props. Got about a million now. Got Two players from, from Italy. Italy. Matt is from Canada. And Mario waving the uh, Union Jack flag representing Great Britain. And it was similar to how we started the final table. We had an, an all-in from two short stacks. It was a chop pop, but then, then the very next hand, we did have our first elimination when Adam Hari from Hungary went out in eighth place in 13,700 euros. And now we come back from break and we have a three-way all-in. Matt Staples tripling up, but we did lose Eric Winquist in fifth place for 24,510 euros in the process. Meanwhile, Matt, with the decision to make with his queen nine suited from the small bind. He is completing from the small bind. A jam would have worked, but that's very results oriented considering we can see that Fabio has four high. Fabio may be thinking about raising here, actually. Putting some pressure on Matt, but not this time. <laughs> and Matt's still ahead, but he could be in a tricky spot because he doesn't know he's ahead. And if Fabio opts to even min bet here, it might work, but Fabio not playing any games with his four high, at least at the moment. And it's a king on the turn, not connecting directly with Matt, but opens up a 10 to make him feel a bit safer about his hand. He would have a straight then. Meanwhile, he's still miles ahead. And Fabio checking back again, not pushing Matt off. So Matt being able to see the entire board. Six of hearts on the river is not a card that helped him. A final check from Matt, is this the chance for Fabio? Is it opening up the opportunity for him to wrestle this away with just deuce four? This time he is reaching for chips, does not have to be that big. Fires out for 100, a little more than half the pot. It is less than two big binds, but it is enough to get Matt to fold the best hand. So Fabio once again leveraging his big stat. Not, not much Matt can do in that spot. In a way, fortunate to be able to see the entire board, but once the board doesn't connect with him at all, even though he was ahead, does need to let go of the best hand. So we got the whole family in. So we got Jamie. I've learned that Bekar is also part of the family. We have mom in the chat. So we have the whole Staples gang in the mix at the moment. So it's an absolute pleasure to be on this side of the microphone. I'm used to listening to Jamie, used to listening to Matt. These guys are both amazing streamers. I usually have a poker stream such as theirs in the background when I am grinding myself. 
mad respect for both of these brothers. Jamie was a true pioneer in poker Twitch community and deserves a lot of credit for everything he has done over the years. Matt opting not to play his king seven from the button and Fabio waking up with an ace. A little jammy jammy here by Fabio with the ace five. Let's see if Mario wakes up with anything in call with it. And he does! Mario making the snap call. He has the pocket rockets. Of course, that's why it was a snap call. Mario in an amazing spot. It was a bit of a setup for Fabio. But he's going to lose a chunk of his chip leading stack and unless some miracle happens here. And no miracle on the 9-10 jack flop. Still rainbow bright on this three of hearts turn. And the official double up comes on the six of spades river. Now it's Mario and Fabio neck and neck. The dynamics have immediately changed at this final table. Fabio now does not have impunity to do whatever he wants like he did earlier on. After doubling up Mario on a bit of a cooler, cannot blame Fabio's play at all there. Just Mario waking up with the goods, getting a hold. And uh, unfortunately for the Matty Ice fans in the chat, the ace is held. But fortunately for Mario, who seems like a genuinely good guy, very good poker player, gets the double up against Fabio. And I love the dynamics change. Typically, I love mayhem in general. And here we go. We have the lovely Venice interviewing Eric. So let's see what she has to say and what Mr. Lindquist has to say about his fifth place finish. Our fifth player, who has just exited, Eric. How are you feeling? You've had a good run. I've had a good run, so it feels good. I mean, or not so good right now, but it is what it is. But you got very far. What was the last hand? Uh, it was a three-way all-in. Uh, king, queen, I had ace, three versus ace, jack. And I mean, I was basically going for fourth place, um, but it uh, I think he had whatever, how many else he had on the river. But yeah, it's fine. That's good. That's all right. I mean, you did very, very well for this whole tournament, I have to say. But now your next steps, what are they going to be? Uh, when it comes to live poker, I think I'm going to play the Battle of Malta and also the Malta Poker Festival. Uh, and then, then we'll see. Okay. Well, congratulations and uh, hope to see you again on this next event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Venice. You can follow her on Instagram at Santa Madonna. And thank you, Eric, for being gracious enough for that exit interview. And I will see you in Malta in a couple of weeks as well. I will be coming back. Port Ambasso Casino is hosting the Malta Poker Festival at the end of October. A fantastic event. Lots of good poker in Malta this time of the year. Headed off by the Party Poker Live, of course. And great numbers, so it's great for the island. Great for Party Poker and amazing for the players. But meanwhile, we have Matt Staples all in. So far, so good for Matt. He does not want anybody to wake up with a bigger pocket pair. Meanwhile, Gala, who just won a decent hand. Not this time. 
and Matt picking up a few chips, adding to his stack up to 840,000. So near Domenico, and meanwhile Mario and Fabio are near chips as well. So we have two co-chip leaders and two co-short stacks. So we're asking why not do the interview off table. It's like really twofold. It gives like the players a small break, the stop of the action. Of course, we want to get the Party Poker Live background that is absolutely fantastic. I personally like the touch. It's always nice to have a sideline reporter gathering some information about players that we can't grab from inside the booth. So I am very thankful for Venice doing a fantastic job today. So Domenico thinking about what to do from the small blind with this Queen-10. He was asking Matt what he has before he jammed to the goods. And Matt with threes in a spot. He would have been happy to jam with his threes if it was a reverse situation where he was in the small blind and Domenico in the big blind. But that is not the case. And sometimes these are hands that you can fold from a later position shove that you may want to call in a blind versus blind situation especially considering the dynamic that it is a short stack jamming into you. So if you double up, you're basically almost eliminating Domenico. It's like a two for one. So maybe these are the thoughts going through Matt's head at the moment. And Matt makes the call with his trades. We'll be racing for his tournament life. Is a little bit ahead. Does have a massive sweat as does Domenico. He did not want to call either. And oh no, three spades on this flop. Lots of outs for Domenico. Any queen, any jack, any 10, any spade. And the nine of clubs on the turn adds to those outs. Now it's any king, any ace as well. Can Matt fade these zillion outs that Domenico has? No, it's a six of spades on the river. Domenico gets there with the flush. It was an incredible run by Matt Staples, but sometimes good things do need to come to an end. But he will walk away with his pockets a little bit fuller, a fourth place prize of 31,900 euros. Well played by Matt. Maybe we get Matt into the booth for a little while, so Matt uh, fans maybe will stick around. I do not have any control of that at the moment as I cannot leave the booth to chase Matt down, but he knows he always has an open invite to join. Meanwhile, the final three players locking up 41,000. The next pay jump is quite serious with a 64,000 euro top uh, second place prize and the winner going home with 93,000. Players are being quite friendly, openly exchanging their approximate chip stacks. You do not need to do that. This is why having like a skill of being able to eyeball chips is quite important. The problem is very often players are not stacking in 20s, being that this is the party poker live, millions players are properly stacking in 20s, especially at the final table. So just doing a little math, those yellow stacks that are stacked up are half a million apiece. That gives you a general idea of where <laughs> players are at if you do wish to eyeball. <laughs> so although many of you were here to watch <laughs> what would happen to Matt, whether he would win the championship, I do hope you stick around because we do have some exciting play left. In the meantime, those of you playing the free roll, anybody with a big stack in the free roll in the chat? The free roll is offering $500 today. There's another one tomorrow for another 500 And of course, 
the finale with a $5,500 free roll with a 5K top prize. And that is a package to the Party Poker Millions Dublin from October 31st to November 5th. It includes the 3,000 Party Poker Millions similar to the event that you see here along with 2,000 euros in uh, accommodations, pocket change, etc., etc. Sure. Just to hop back into the action, we had Domenico open with the min raise from under the gun. Mario defending with his jack-10. Domenico flopping top two pair. It checked by both players. Domenico trying for some value on the turn, unable to, uh, to get any. And Domenico did win that hand, so the graphic uh, was incorrect there, but uh, in general, uh, it's really just a few big blinds different that may carry over into the chip counts. Ah, Matt Staples has made it to the chat, so Matt, incredible run. We would have all liked to see you at least make it to the podium, if not further, but you can go home with a very nice cash. We, we do expect to see you on another final table this week, not to put any pressure on you, but the 31,900 euros is a nice score, so congratulations on that. And Matt, you're more than welcome at any point to join for the stretch run of this event if you have the energy to do so. I know what it's like to play at a big final table. It does take a lot of mental focus, a lot of mental energy. But if not, I hope we see you in the booth later this week. Top-notch guy, amazing poker player, and does a lot for the poker community. Absolute honor to uh, spend a little time with Matt this week. So Fabio opening to 125. Mario calling from the small blind. And Domenico getting up from his chair, but it's Mario flopping the goods there. Ace, ace, deuce has the trips. Fabio with some backdoor flush draw. That's really about it here. That's where his 4% comes from, though. But Mario hoping that Fabio continues because typically this would be a better flop for the player that opened rather than the player to, to defend. But being that Mario did call from the small blind, he should have a lot of aces there. But Mario is going to try to string this along for as much as he can. Raising it up to 300. And Fabio snap holding, so Mario picking up a pot. Now in the chip lead with a small margin with 2.5 million. But all three players not too far apart at this moment. It is anybody's game. And I believe the Party Poker Party has to be ongoing at the moment. Have not had any updates from anybody at the party, but it is at Club 22. You can get your bracelet at the welcome desk. I highly recommend attending Party Poker Parties. You don't have party in your name unless you know how to throw a good party, and Party Poker knows how to throw a party. Club 22 is also fantastic if you're in Malta because you have these incredible views. It is on the 22nd floor. But meanwhile, we're going to have Matty Ice here being interviewed by the lovely Venice. So let's see what they have to say. And we're here with Matt, who has just made fourth place in our tournament. Matt, how are you feeling? I'm thrilled, honestly. I, I was short stacked for a while. I probably should have gotten fifth. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just feel lucky right now. And yeah, feel good about the cash. Well, good for you. You've done very, very well in this whole tournament. You are one of the ambassadors of Party Poker. Uh, lucky guy, yeah. <laughs> You've done great for all of these tournaments so far. And now next step, what is that going to be? I'm going to be here for another couple of days. I'm going to play some more Millions events and try to get back on the feature table. So 
That's cool. And I know you have your girlfriend here as well, and she was playing the ladies' event. Did you teach her a thing or two about poker? I tried to teach her for the ladies' event. She played her first event here in Malta, and, well, two, two entries. She had to rebuy, but, yeah, no, she had fun, and, yeah. Well, well done. Well done, man. I'm very happy for you, and congratulations, and we hope to see you on the next one. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. So thank you, Matt, for the exit interview. Meanwhile, check out the Spins Overdrive. I mean, I will be playing these. These look so exciting. I did get to play one really quick just to check it out. Do love how the multiplier works in this bad boy. It is not fixed to 2, 3, 5, 10, etc., etc. It could be like 2.76 like I got on my first one, but it goes all the way up to 240,000. So thanks again, Matt, for the exit interview. And that was Santa Madonna, a.k.a. Venice. You can check her out on Instagram under Santa Madonna. Very humble and very happy for Matt for his deep run. A little further would have been nice for everybody, especially Matt. So Domenico completing from the small mine. Fabio with four high opting to check back his option from the big mine. Fabio, who was at 3.5, 3.6 million earlier, lost a big pot to Mario not so long ago with ace five against aces. And three hearts on the six four jack flop. Domenico with the nine of hearts in his hand. Meanwhile, Fabio connecting with bottom pair, checking back. Domenico now with the flush on the ace of hearts turn. Does check it again. Fabio checking it back. The inconsequential nine of spades on the river. Is Domenico going to try for some small value here? He does, but Fabio having nothing of it just has the bottom pair on a ridiculous board for him to call. So Domenico picking up the pot. Thank you, Bekar, for uh, for tuning in as well and being part of the whole Staples crew rooting on Matt. Do you love all the support that Matt get? Matt received. He absolutely deserved every little bit of it, if not more. He gives back a lot to the poker community. And it's not easy. Sometimes the guys like Jamie and Matt, they make it look easy what they do, but it really isn't. It's a lot of hard work. A lot of energy goes into what they do. And Domenico opening up the button. Can he win back-to-back -back pots? Fabio folding his rags, but Mario uh, defending his jack nine suited both players with the same suit. So if we see a club happy board, we could see some trouble for Mario. But meanwhile, to queen out of the window to connect with Domenico, flopping two pair with the seven and four following. I don't think he's gonna be able to get much out of Mario if he continues here. But it is just a small bet and a fold. So Domenico winning another small pot. Now all three players literally inches apart in chips. So chat, anybody with the deep run and the free roll, please shout out. I would have loved to have joined you guys in that. Maybe I'll figure it out. Maybe I will join you guys in a future one, but I think we will sit out the free rolls, let you guys have all the value. I will be in Dublin anyway. And this gives you guys a chance to join us.
<laughs> Mario, thinking about the nine four suited. does complete the blinds and Domenico opting not to do anything fancy with his fives checking it back a four out of the window followed by a pair of eights so Mario now falsely might think he's good this is a beautiful flop for Domenico especially after he just checked it back from the big blind a quick call to the min bet by Mario Jack of spades on the turn. Let's see if Mario continues with connecting with the four. A hundred five, so about one third of the pot. And Domenico calling once again. No reason for him to do anything but call, in fact. And a 10 of hearts on the river. This will often go check, check. And indeed it does. And Domenico winning another pot, this time with the fives, and is up over 2 million. So Domenico started this final table with 1.335 million in chips and has peaked over 2 million. It is anybody's game after Fabio Peluso was in early control. But with three players left, all three players around the same stack. So we'll see some good poker. And speaking of three max poker, we were seeing that nice ad for the spins overdrive. Quite unique in terms of how that works. You basically sign up for a game at a various stake levels. You're playing against two other players. But similar to other spins, a multiplier is determined. But it's like... But meanwhile, we have to get back into this. Mario just jamming if this is indeed 30 big blinds. And Fabio waking up with ace jack suited. I do not think Mario necessarily has 1.7 million. It would be an awfully wide jam. Okay, so we're going to get a count. We'll find out exactly what's happening here. Fabio stack seems to be around 1819. Just doing a quick inventory of his chips. Let's see if Mario indeed has 1.7 million. That will make a big difference. Now we see that if Fabio does call, he will be crushing his opponent. The drama, the suspense. And he makes the call! So Domenico is definitely not all in with three deuce. We did see the three deuce flash. We did see King Jack against Ace Jack. Domenico at risk. No, it's Mario at risk, I'm sorry. <laughs> Even though the graphics don't show it, we did see that King Jack flash before. And here we see it again. So Mario at risk. Both players around the same stack to see the 9, 10, 10 flop. So now it's not just a king, but it's a queen that also Fabio has to fade. But he did flop that flush draw too. So some of those queens would give him a flush. And it's a king on the turn, so Mario pulling out ahead, but not out of the woods yet. Just a two-to-one favorite with one card to come, in fact. So many outs can help Fabio get right back into it. Yes. And the nine of clubs double pairing the board on the river. Mario 
getting there to win a massive double up. Meanwhile, we have Fabio down to fumes, just two big blinds. That's poker, folks. Not always the best hand wins. You cannot blame necessarily Mario for committing with the king jack. It did seem like a bit of a wide shove if the stack sizes were correct. And he is shaking Fabio's hand, so apparently Fabio was covered. But I think Fabio does have a couple of chips left. We will find out soon enough. They are doing an official count. Meanwhile, we do have some reports about the free roll. Yorkshire Ace chilling in 56th place, so very good luck in that. Dave Kaut asking if Late Reg is still opened. I do not believe it is, but there will be another free roll tomorrow and the massive free roll on Tuesday. And yes, Fabio now still has a chip in a chair. Was in full control for a while until that Ace-5 didn't get there against Aces to lose half his stack. And now really needs to make a run. It's not even 130 he has. He basically is putting up the small bind, and that is the majority of his stack. So he has just 45,000 remaining. And look at all those chips Mario has accumulated. He's building the Great Wall of Mario. Looks like Mario is making sure his stacks are in 20s. That's always appreciated, so well done there, Mario. Not just for getting there with your King Jack. But meanwhile, Domenico committing from the button with a limp. Fabio has no choice but to put in his extra 15,000, so he is all in with the Jack-6. There is no seven-deuce game, but Mario is getting a free look. No reason to bump this up. You do want to go heads up. If it was a raise, he could easily get out of the way. Unless it was yesterday's cash game, then he might be jamming it in. Does indeed check, so Fabio is at risk. Is actually ahead with his jack six at the moment, so in a spot where he could be tripling up to nearly four big blinds. But it's a seven out of the window, followed by a king and a three, the rainbow flop. So both Domenico and Mario connecting with that seven. Fabio does need to hit a jack. Eight of spades on the turn is not looking good for Mr. Peluso. And the six of clubs on the river does connect with Fabio, but does not pull him ahead of a pair of sevens. Domenico has the better kicker, wins the pop. But meanwhile, Fabio Peluso put on an impressive display only to get very short on chips after just now his ace jack did not hold against king jack meanwhile massive congratulations to fabio for a third place performance worth 41,000 euros now the final two have locked up a 64,000 runner-up prize with a top prize of 93,000 to be played for So it looks like we're gonna go on a very short break to set up the heads up play to put the players in the right spots on the table. Maybe we'll see that lovely trophy back on the table as well. So we'll be right back very soon. This is Jason Glatzer at the Party Poker Millions Live 3000 Euro main event.
Fabio Peluso, our third place player. Well done, Fabio. Congratulazioni. Thank you, thank you. Fabio doesn't speak very good English, but I'm going to help him. Now, Fabio, how was the whole tournament for you? Okay. Come era? The, the, the tournament is a very nice tournament. I am uh, very happy play it. And uh, unlucky in the last end, I busted in a very cooler. And uh, Vabbè, that's, 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 that's poker. That's poker, that is poker. Was the field good? Il campo, i giocatori, were they field facili, dif difficili? The field is uh, very good for me. Yeah. Uh, very good, okay, very good. good. And Fabio, your next step, where are you going to go? Uh, what are you going to do? Next step, uh, I go in the next week in Rosado for WSOPC yeah. and uh, next uh, EPT Cyprus and the next uh, WSOP Europe. It's uh, a month very full. Of all poker, poker non-stop for you, yeah? yeah, yeah. Okay, Fabio, well, congratulazioni, well done. And uh, we will see you again soon. Thank you so much. Grazie. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think he's going to be able to get much out of Mario if he continues here. But it is just a small bet and a fold. So Domenico winning another small pot. Now all three players literally inches apart in chips. So chat, anybody with the deep run and the free roll, please shout out. I would have loved to have joined you guys in that. Maybe I'll figure it out. Maybe I will join you guys in a future one. But I think we will sit out the free rolls, let you guys have all the value. I will be in Dublin anyway. And this gives you guys a chance to join us. Mario, thinking about the 9-4 suited, does complete the blinds, and Domenico opting not to do anything fancy with his fives, checking it back. A four out of the window followed by a pair of eights, so Mario now falsely might think he's good. This is a beautiful flop for Domenico, especially after he just checked it back from the big blind. A quick call to the min bet by Mario. Jack of spades on the turn. Let's see if Mario continues with connecting with the four. A hundred five, so about one third of the pot. And Domenico calling once again. No reason for him to do anything but call, in fact. And a 10 of hearts on the river. This will often go check, check. And indeed it does. And Domenico winning another pot, this time with the fives, and is up over 2 million. So Domenico started this final table with 1.335 million in chips and has peaked over 2 million. It is anybody's game after Fabio Peluso was in early control. But with three players left, all three players around the same stack. So we'll see some good poker. And speaking of three max poker, we were seeing that nice ad for the spins overdrive. Quite unique in terms of how that works. You basically sign up for a game at a various stake levels. You're playing against two other players. But similar to other spins, a multiplier is determined. But it's like... But meanwhile, we have to get back into this. Mario just jamming if this is indeed 30 big blinds. And Fabio waking up with ace-jack suited. 
I do not think Mario necessarily has 1.7 million. It would be an awfully wide jam. Okay, so we're going to get a count. We'll find out exactly what's happening here. Fabio stack seems to be around 1819. Just doing a quick inventory of his chips. Let's see if Mario indeed has 1.7 million. That will make a big difference. Now we see that if Fabio does call, he will be crushing his opponent. The drama, the suspense. And he makes the call! So Domenico is definitely not all in with three deuce. We did see the three deuce flash. We did see King Jack against Ace Jack. Domenico at risk. No, it's Mario at risk, I'm sorry. <laughs> Even though the graphics don't show it, we did see that King Jack flash before. And here we see it again. So Mario at risk. Both players around the same stack to see the 9, 10, 10 flop. So now it's not just a king, but it's a queen that also Fabio has to fade. But he did flop that flush draw too. So some of those queens would give him a flush. And it's a king on the turn, so Mario pulling out ahead, but not out of the woods yet. Just a two to one favorite with one card to come, in fact. So many outs can help Fabio get right back into it. Yes. And the nine of clubs double pairing the board on the river. Mario getting there to win a massive double up. Meanwhile, we have Fabio down to fumes, just two big blinds. That's poker, folks. Not always the best hand wins. You cannot blame necessarily Mario for committing with the King Jack. It did seem like a bit of a wide shove if the stack sizes were correct. And he is shaking Fabio's hand, so apparently Fabio was covered. But I think Fabio does have a couple chips left. We will find out soon enough. They are doing an official count. Meanwhile, we do have some reports about the free roll. Yorkshire Ace chilling in 56th place, so very good luck in that. Dave Kaut asking if late reg is still opened. I do not believe it is, but there will be another free roll tomorrow and the massive free roll on Tuesday. And yes, Fabio now still has a chip in a chair. Was in full control for a while until that ace five didn't get there against aces to lose half his stack. And now really needs to make a run. It's not even 130 he has. He basically is putting up the small blind and that is the majority of his stack. So he has just 45,000 remaining. And look at all those chips Mario has accumulated. He's building the great wall of Mario. Looks like Mario is making sure his stacks are in 20s. That's always appreciated. So well done there, Mario. Not just for getting there with your King Jack. But meanwhile, Domenico committing from the button with a limp. Fabio has no choice but to put in his extra 15,000. So he is all in with the Jack-6. There is no seven deuce game, but Mario is getting a free look. No reason to bump this up. You do want to go heads up. If it was a raise, he could easily get out of the way. Unless it was yesterday's cash game, then he might be jamming it in. Does indeed check, so Fabio is at risk. Is actually ahead with his jack six at the moment, so in a spot where he could be tripling up to nearly four big blinds.
But it's a seven out of the window, followed by a king and a three, the rainbow flop. So both Domenico and Mario connecting with that seven. Fabio does need to hit a jack. Eight of spades on the turn is not looking good for Mr. Peluso. And the six of clubs on the river does connect with Fabio, but does not pull him ahead of a pair of sevens. Domenico has the better kicker, wins the pop. But meanwhile, Fabio Peluso put on an impressive display only to get very short on chips after just now his ace jack did not hold against king jack. Meanwhile, massive congratulations to Fabio for a third place performance worth 41,000 euros. Now the final two have locked up a 64,000 runner up prize with a top prize of 93,000 to be played for. Welcome back. This is Jason Glatzer, and we are now heads up in the 3,000 euro buy-in party poker live millions Malta main event. We are down to just two players, around three million chips each, with Mario Trato with the chip lead over Domenico Gala. Uh, these two players came in as two of the top three stacks at the final table. It was Fabio Peluso, our WSOP bracelet winner, who came in with the chip lead, was crushing along before running into aces to lose a good portion of his stack. He went out eventually in third place, and now we are down to a player from the United Kingdom, another player for Italy in the hunt for the title. So get ready for an exciting conclusion. Both players have locked up 64,000 euros, but there's still a bit to play for. They're basically playing a 29,000 euro heads up with a 93,000 euro top prize. Of course, the coveted trophy is also on the players' minds. It's always nice to have that nice mantelpiece and the Party Poker Millions 
trophy is definitely one to have in your collection. Quite a prestigious event and one that both players will remember regardless of the turnout. For those of you just tuning in, we did have Matt Staples also at this final table. He did bow out in fourth place for 31,900 euros. We will likely be able to get him in the booth later in the week. He is busy with paperwork and other things at the moment. Went to check on him during the break, but is in good spirits if, you're, if his family is watching. And thank you for everybody that is still tuning in. We did have a plethora of Matt Staples fans in the chat group. But these two players have played their hearts out. Domenico Gala is a semi-local. He's here for a lot of the big events. And Mario, our player from United Kingdom, he is being very friendly at the table, not necessarily with his actions poker-wise, but with his demeanor and manner. So two gentlemen facing heads up for the title. And we have, a, I believe, a limp pot. We don't have graphics yet, but it's a 5-7 jack flop. <coughs> Looks like it must have gone check-check. A three of diamonds on the turn. So it was a limp pot. It's checking all the way through. Domenico with nothing. Mario now connecting with top pair on the river. And after checking around, he will likely try for some value if Domenico checks. But meanwhile, Domenico firing out for 75,000 with his air. It looks like Mario is sizing out a raise here. Hoping that he will get a crying call from a jack or a seven. And this won't work this time, but Mario winning the first heads up pot. Padding a little bit to his small chip lead. But nobody on the ropes yet. We're still at blinds 30,000, 60,000. So even our short stack at the moment, Domenico has 40 big blinds. Blinds will go up shortly though to 40,000, 80,000. And that is a beautiful trophy that we just saw. Now we have a nice close-up of Alex, our amazing TV table dealer. He put in a lot of hours at the TV table yesterday. It looks like we have new chips in place, so those must be 100Ks. They are, so the white ones are worth 100,000. It was a min-raise by Dominica with his ace, and Mario also with an ace. So let's see if there's leveling wars with these weak aces. And Mario just jamming it in his eye. Dominica forced to lay down his ace, unless a deuce or a three would have shown up on the board, that those type of hands typically wind up with a chop. But Mario showing relentless aggression and just snagging that one away. Well, Lost Kids, now we know who the true hardcore poker supporters are. I am also a Matt supporter, but if I'm watching a stream and I'm coming in for a particular player, I get vested in the action, and I definitely need to watch to see who will win. And the Party Poker TV community is one of the best, if not the best, uh, Twitch community out there in terms of friendliness, support for each other. So it's also just fun to hang around from that aspect as well. So we have a limp by Mario with a 5-3. Domenico not adding to the pot from the big blind with the jack-5 suited to see a jack-4-8 flop. So Domenico flopping the top pair. Checks through. Nine of diamonds on the turn. The check mark already with Domenico. But he's not going to get any love here unless Mario opts to spaz out a little bit. Not this time. And Domenico picking up a minuscule pot. And yes, I did use the word minuscule for a second time. Okay, so for those of you, we have some official information. Our next stream is Monday, 5 p.m. local Malta time, so that it is Central European summertime for the Mystery Bounty final table. Very excited about that. 
we should have more information about that later in terms of what the mystery bounties are looking like, what the top prize are it's looking like. The mystery bounties are always loads of fun. So definitely tune back in for that. And then of course we will have the conclusion of the 1 million euro guaranteed Grand Prix, which featured a 550 euro buy-in. And we shall see who reaches the final tables of both of those two events. Meanwhile, we have Italy Pop Mario with 5-4, Domenico with Jack-6. And Domenico connecting with his Jack, Mario connecting with this 4. So maybe we see some action on this hand. It's Mario after checking, calling with his bottom pair. Ace on the turn. Ace slowed down the action a little bit, but not that we've had a super amount of action this hand. It does check through. And nine of hearts on the river, the check mark over to Domenico after pairing his jack goes check, check. Domenico picking up the pot. Bravo. So I always like to know where everybody is originally from. So first I'll start off myself. I'm originally from New Jersey. I've lived in Europe though for about 20 years, the last 14 or so in the beautiful country of Lithuania. Very happy to be living there. Uh, I do travel a, ro a lot around the world as you can suspect, so I am a man of the world as well. But where are you all from in the chat? It looks like I know where some of you are from, but let's get that going. It's always curious to see where people are watching from. Meanwhile, we have Mario limping. Domenico with the jack again. This time it's jack three suited. Mario still ahead on the 10 6 do spot, popping the middle pair. And easy peasy lemon squeezy for Domenico. Yorkshire Ace, I think I could have guessed yours, John for Tree Ireland. Well, we'll be there for the Party Poker Millions soon enough, so hopefully we can meet up there. That's October 31st and November 5th in Dublin at the Intercontinental. Supernova from Wales. KC from Mexico. Mexico is a massive country, so curious where in Mexico, but uh, do love visiting your country as well. It's been probably about 20 years since the last time. I think my favorite part of Mexico is actually Tulum. But have enjoyed uh, Mexico City a little bit too. In my younger days, maybe a little bit of time in Tijuana, but that is stuff maybe we shouldn't be talking about on the stream. And blinds have gone up to 40, 80. Mario jamming it in on a limp pot with the ace nine. Domenico is gonna let go of his 10, nine. So Mario picking up, willing to just commit his entire stack at times, but his opponent did have 30 big blinds there. And are any of you in the chat actually physically watching from Malta? If so, it would be my absolute honor and pleasure to meet you. If not, there'll be another chance in Dublin soon enough. At least maybe get to meet John. Maybe I know John. <coughs> now we have a limp pot, seven high between the two players. So maybe we got a little bit of leveling war. I'm waiting for the leveling wars. Nothing doing on this kind of flop. And the 10 of diamonds on the turn, the board just gets scarier and scarier. Neither player wanting to try to wrestle away the pot. All it's going to take is a bet. Mario is not going to bet now that he connected a little bit to this board. And after Domenico checks, it's an easy win there for Mario. Without that 7, it could have been a chop pot if it was an 8 or higher. So Mario currently the favorite to win, but I would say the skill level between the two players seems fairly even. 
anything can happen. Both players are not short on chips, at least not quite yet, but blinds will continue to increase. We have about 35 minutes left in this blind level before blinds will go up to 5,100,000. Cool. A little limpy limpy again from Domenico and Mario, more than happy not to uh, have any raise going on with the seven deuce. At least you can see a flop. And look at this flop, Mario flopping the top pair. Domenico quickly checking back. And now turning an open ender, Domenico. So we could see some spiciness, but Mario uh, not uh, betting his uh, seven there. Likely we'll call this bet of 125,000 into a pot of 240, so about a half pot bet. But what do I know? Mario laying down that seven, laying down the best hand at the current time. Of course, a six, eight, nine, or jack would have helped Domenico with one card to come, but as things stood right there, was ahead. Want to also give a special shout out to Supernova. She has confirmed she will be with us all week long. She is one of the reasons why the Party Poker Twitch channel has the least toxic Twitch community that I've encountered. At least on the scale that we're talking about here, some of these really small communities can be very family friendly. I, although I do watch Matt and Jamie, I do check out some of the smaller guys as well. Sometimes there's good hidden content. But here we go, we have another limp pop, but Mario with the open ender with the straight. Domenico with a gut shot, but quickly folds facing a min bet. So players playing a bit tight, which is understandable. There's no ICM when it's heads up. That's literally they're playing a 29,000 euro heads up after locking up already 64,000 and a 93,000 euro top prize. I would love to see the chat blow up with some love for Supernova. She's doing an amazing job. And I'm not just talking about today. I'm talking about at party poker events that take place all the time. She helped out quite a lot during our of previous Grand Prix in Bratislava a few months ago. And is back with us doing her thing. Making my life nice and easy. So it's a limp pot. Once again, both players playing small ball. Mario flopping top pair this time, but Domenico with the flush draw. And Domenico min betting. Mario shouldn't be going anywhere with this top pair. May even think about raising. It's a kind of board you kind of want to check raise, not just because of the diamonds, but because of that nine with the queen. Is indeed raising to 300,000. He's going to make Domenico pay the price if he wants to see if he can hit his flush draw. He has back doors to the straight as well. Cool. Does indeed call. So it's our first juicy pot and heads up action. Ace of spades on the turn may slow things down for both players. Mario checking. Is Domenico going to see this as a sign? to put some of those white chips into the pot. Check. Does check it back. And the eight of clubs on the river. So Mario with the check mark. Domenico bricks his flush draw, but still potentially can win the pot with a big bet. But it's awfully hard to do. It's looking like he might reach for some chips. He's at least counting things out. So a big bet of 650,000, really putting Mario to the test. He has second pair 
a fairly strong heads up hand, but once that ace hit the turn, everything slowed down for Mario. Opening the door, and Domenico pulling off the bluff, getting it through, winning a big pot. 1.5 million chips heading his way, and you could hear Domenico's rail applauding and shouting in excitement. And Mario saying he caught you on the river, but he didn't catch you at all. And Star Yorkshire just read that you have bubbled the free roll, but you'll have two more chances to do a little bit better than a bubble. But at least uh, you were able to make a deepish run. You know, Drow Slasher, it's sometimes hard to criticize heads up play because you have to come up with many different strategies. And it's not all that often unless you've played tens, of hundreds of thousands of tournaments even. You can get that kind of volume and potentially online that you're in these heads up situations in massive fields. So knowing exactly what to do may be easier sometimes with six, nine players than it is with heads up. Mario jamming, Domenico not having anything to call. And chips back Mario's way. Oh, you're still in Yorkshire, so good luck. Get the job done. Or save your run good for Tuesday's free roll where there's 5,500 euros in prizes, including a top prize that has a $5,000 package to the Party Poker Millions Dublin on October 31st and November 5th. It includes the 3,000 buy-in for that Millions event similar to what you're watching now along with 2,000 euros in accommodation and expenses. Although I do write for a living supernova, sometimes my reading comprehension skills are less to be desired, apparently. So we didn't commentate this hand, but nothing to see here. Ten high wins it somehow against eight high. Bob, we get in trouble. <laughs> Had a little chat with Alex uh, as well. He is the TV table dealer. Does enjoy his job. And he had a long grind yesterday at the TV table and not a single mistake by Alex. So props to Alex. Alexandria was yesterday as well. She did a fantastic job. And today we have Alex and Francesca. Do love to give love to the fabulous dealers. Without them, we would not have live poker. So here we go, we have another limp pot, this time Domenico with a bit of a hand with the ace nine, but it's Mario with bottom pair in the flush draw. But that all changes with a blank ace on the turn. We have Domenico pulling out ahead, at least for now, and it's a five of clubs on the river. Somehow no chips coming into the pot, but maybe some will come in now. It's a bet of 175. Is Mario gonna cry call here with the six? He would have liked to see another heart. But Mario playing it very tight to the vest. This case, in this particular case, it worked out. And stacks are very close to even. Welcome, B Killer. I enjoy that emoji. I'm not sure that should be me, but it looks like kind of what I'm doing right now. Open and close mouth constantly. So it looks like it's gonna be a limping strategy for at least a bit. We haven't really seen anything other than that. We have a limp with the queen seven, a check back with the four three by Mario. Domenico grabbing let's say a piece-ish of this eight 
nine, ten, flop a six for the straight, a jack for a bigger straight. And it's a two of spades on the turn. Neither player really doing anything but betting what they have. We did see a nice bluff by Domenico earlier, though, to gain a big pot. And just a small pot gives Domenico the chip lead. Both players neck and neck, literally just a blind apart, maybe two. You know, because I have, uh, it should be six million or hundred twenty. I have two seven. You have the three three. Six million. Six million. Okay, so Domenico is not in the lead. It's just a uh, because we just confirmed that it's two seven for Domenico. He said, "Well, you have three three. Mario nodded his head. Yes, I have about three point three million." So we can add a half a million to Mario's stack at any given point. And Mario jamming it with the five, so he either limps or he jams. And Domenico with the jack deuce is going nowhere with that hand. So Mario up to 3.5 million ish. Domenico still all smiles, has a big rail. He comes from Italy for all the big events, so people in Malta recognize him, people in Italy recognize him. Friendly guy. Mario also seems quite friendly, at least with a very good demeanor at the poker table in terms of how he is behaving. Always nice to see players have fun when they're competing for an extra 29,000 euros. And of course the trophy. So it's another limp pot. Mario flopping middle pair on the 10-3-8, two heart flop. Domenico with pretty much absolutely nothing, but it's Domenico finally making a flop move. We saw him make a river move, but it's been very passive by both players on the flop and turn. Does get a call from Mario. King of spades on the turn. Domenico is not able to win the pot unless he's able to wrestle it away. Now there's two over cards to the eight. We saw Mario fold second pair earlier on a river bet. Is Domenico going to be able to take another one away or is Mario going to stick around this time? Thinking things through. And does fold to Domenico. Taking down the pot. I do believe Mario still does have a small chip lead. 3.1, 3.2 million chips. But it is super close. And it really doesn't matter too much who has a one or two big blind chip lead. If the stacks collide, that will likely be the winner. At least at these stack depths. A nice close-up of the trophy. Now you can see what I'm talking about. It, it's even more gorgeous in person. Mario with the queen four. No surprise, he is limping. And a check back from Domenico with a king eight. So both players with a Broadway card this time. Domenico has an edge with his king and connects with his eight on the three ace eight flop, two spades, nobody with spades in their hand. Both players check to see the turn, which is a seven of spades. Perhaps Domenico will lead out at this point with his eight. He does and gets a quick fold by Mario, shows the eight. And a round of applause from his rail once again. 
or at least from one very loud person on the rail. Personally, since I do not have a lot of time myself to be playing live tournaments, I do play a lot of online tournaments. My feature table experience usually consists of being in a cash game. I've probably played about 20 to 30 cash game streams myself. And there you don't typically have a rail, but I, I'm just picturing what it would be like to have that support, that energy flowing through you. So Domenico has, I think, the rail advantage at this point. It does actually add to you. It helps you stay focused, stay positive. It's possible even some of those guys are watching the stream so you can get a little bit of information on the breaks. That's perfectly allowed because either player can do it. You're just not obviously allowed to have phones at the table. But during the breaks, nobody's controlling what you do. So that was another teaser for the spins overdrive, but I was just looking 1.2 million possible to win on just a spin. That's absolutely fantastic. But imagine this even, I mean, uh, you probably have to buy in for like a higher buy in for that 1 million, but picture this, you just have a few dollars in your party poker account. They have even 25 cents spin and goes, but let's uh, spin, I'm sorry, spin overdrives. But the $1 level, we can easily focus on that. Anybody can afford a $1 game. It is possible with a 240,000 multiplier that you're gonna be playing for hundreds and thousands of dollars. Of course, that's not the likely scenario, but any given game, that can happen. So I will be checking out the Spins Overdrive when I get home and we'll be playing. I did get a nice preview today and did love the graphics, love the way the multiplier works. It is also designed in a way that should attract more recreational players, which is good for everybody, good for the recreationals, and good for others as well. So the spin population is not inundated with just hardcore grinders. Oh my, what's going on here? Wow. Uh, sneaky limp by Domenico with the monster of Ace Queen, but Mario jacking it up to 475, and Domenico jamming it in! Oh, wow. Come on, aces, come on. What a setup. Aces against ace queen. We could have a winner right here, right now. It would be a massive cooler if the aces didn't hold. You cannot blame Domenico at all for getting in with the ace queen. This is just a setup for him. He can sleep well at night either way. Nothing he can do differently. But this will determine the match. It's a nine, king, five flop. Not very good for ace queen. Needs a jack ten runner. Yes. It's the two of spades yes. on the turn and Mario with the yes. Yes. Mario already with the check mark, but let's finish out the board. And the three of spades on the river. We need to make things official. According to our counts, Domenico does have about a big blind left, but either way, it's looking very good that Mario has shipped this event for 93,000 euros after a six setup of a hand where Domenico with ace-queen ran into Mario's pocket rockets. We will get the official count, but it's looking very good that Mario won this. And indeed, that is the case. So massive congratulations to Mario Trotto winning the event in style with the best hand in poker with the pocket rockets for 93,000 euros. Quite a performance, quite a final table. We had Matty Ice at the table. We had a WSOP winner at the table. It was amazing action, but we will be back tomorrow at around 5.30 for the mystery bounty. Once again, congratulations to Mario Trateau 93,000 euros, the beautiful trophy. Well done. This is Jason Glatzer, and see you manana.
I was 10th in chips uh, with three big blinds and I took it down and now this is my second trophy. In one year? Yeah. Amazing, <laughs> congratulations. Was this pretty speedy for you, the whole tournament or what was the field like for you? Um, to be fair, I was disappointed with the runners, okay, okay but they, um, it made up for it in the end by winning the trophy. You, know. you, you had a feeling deep down that this was yours? Yeah, well, um, yesterday I think I was on two big blinds, yeah. okay, and then I built it back up. So, yeah, um, I had it in me. Um, I, know, I know my limits and obviously the cards, you know, fell in order. And you've been playing for how long? Well, I've been playing since uh, 2011, but I took a break um, for about six years and I only started playing uh, about six months ago. So your first wins have all been in these last couple of years? No, uh, my last win, I think I came second in the UK IPT 2011. And since then I took a break and I thought I'll start over again. So yeah, I've taken two trophies and a few. Now you're good. Yeah, a couple of good. trophies, a couple of mini caches. And to be fair, look, if it wasn't for my family, my missus, Victoria Wallace, and my kids, they're the ones that are supporting me. They're the ones that are letting me go all these different countries. So yeah. They give you the freedom to do what you are really passionate right. about. Yeah, yeah, they give you the freedom. Like, Vicky gives me the freedom. My son's there, my daughter, and even my dog as well, you know? Amazing. <laughs> well, Mario, bravo, bravo. That is yours. Congratulations. Well done. Domenico, second place, secondo, bravissimo, well done. Thank you very much, I'm really happy. Very happy, yeah. bravo. So you, you, you've you succeeded to get second place. Uh, is this your first, second win or have you won before? No, I have been, some, some, yeah. So you, you're deep into the whole poker throughout yeah. most of your years? Yeah, 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 I do something in your years. And now next step, where's that going to be? Next step, I play all live in Malta and then I don't know. I will see. You live in Malta, right? I, I come many times, so I stay much, much here and then I left, come, uh, okay. whatever. <laughs> yeah. But poker, yeah, 360. Poker, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Va bene, grazie mille, Domenico. Well done, congratulations. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>